By now you are all familiar with VB theory or how VB theory try to explain bonding in coordination compounds. So in this video let's solve a couple of questions based on the same. And the first question says the spin magnetic moment of FeCl64- is 4.9 Bohr magneton and that of FeCn64- is 0 Bohr magneton. What is the hybridization of these complexes? So based on these magnetic moments, we can attempt to figure out the hybridization and geometry of these complexes. Okay. So the first step is to figure out the oxidation state of the central metal ion in these complexes. So let's assume the oxidation state of Fe as uh, X, then X minus 6 is equal to minus 4. Chloride ions are anionic ligands, so they have a negative charge of minus 1 actually. So this gives us the oxidation state of ion as plus 2. Now the electronic configuration of ion is argon 3d6 4s2. So that of Fe2 plus would be 3d6 4s0. So based on this if we pair up the electrons or if we fill the electrons in the orbitals how would they look like? So we have 3d 4s 4p and 4d orbitals here and we also have a very important information magnetic moment is given as 4.9 basically it is non-zero. So that means we have unpaired electrons here, correct? So if we fill up these um, electrons in these orbitals, we have six electrons. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. Now, do you think pairing will occur in this case? No, because if pairing occurred, then our experimental data would be different. In that case, magnetic moment would be zero. Now since magnetic moment, spin magnetic moment here is 4.9 Bohr magneton, you can see that we do have unpaired electrons. In fact, we substitute the number of unpaired electrons in the mu s formula. We have 4 unpaired electrons here, right? And the formula is under root of n into n plus 2, correct? Mu s is n into n plus 2. And if we substitute this value here, which is under root of 4 into 4 plus 2 6 root of 24 will give you the same value which is 4.9 Bohr magneton. So this means pairing does not occur in this particular complex. And we also know that for a coordinate covalent bond to form the central metal ion must have empty orbitals right. It is onto these empty orbitals that the ligands would be able to donate their electrons. For instance, the bonding here is not same as what happens or what occurs in a typical covalent bond. In a covalent bond, you have the overlap of atomic orbitals containing unpaired electrons, right? Equal contribution from both the orbitals. But in the case of coordinate covalent bond, it is the ligands that donate a pair of electrons to the empty orbitals of the metal ion. And this is why we call a metal ion in a typical coordination complex as Lewis acid because it has empty orbitals which can accept electron pair and the ligands as Lewis bases which actually donate electron pair to the empty orbitals. So this is what happens in a typical coordinate covalent bond and you can see that this is slightly different from the covalent bond formation. So basically what I'm trying to say is that we have to have empty orbitals onto which electron pairs can be donated, right? And we are not getting it from this orbital. We are not getting it from 3D orbitals. So we have to engage the others, 4S, 4P and 4D orbitals in order to form the new bond. And as a result, ion uses its 4S, 4P and 4D orbitals to form six hybrid orbitals. Basically, one 4S, three 4P and two 4D orbitals would hybridize to form six new sp 3d2 hybrid orbitals. So these orbitals would combine to form the new sp3d2 hybrid orbitals and it is onto these hybrid orbitals that a ligand which is chloride ion would be able to donate their electron pair. That is the six chloride ligands donate their lone pair of electrons and overlap with these hybrid orbitals forming coordinate covalent bonds. So because we have overlap of six ligands here or six pair of electrons are being donated here, the coordination number is six and as a result the corresponding geometry is octahedral. Correct? So to answer this question, the hybridization of a complex FeCl64- is sp3d2. And you can see that because we are using the outer orbitals, not 3D inner orbital, because we are using the outer 4D orbitals, we can also call this complex an outer orbital complex. And this outer orbital complex is also paramagnetic that we already know from the information of the magnetic moment, right? 
So let's extend the same logic to the second complex FeCN6-4-. Now here again we can see that the oxidation state of iron is plus 2 which means we have Fe2 plus configuration, Ar3D6 is the electronic configuration. But most importantly the magnetic moment here is 0. What does that mean? That means we do not have any unpaired electrons. The complex is diamagnetic so that means we would not have unpaired electrons like this. All the 6 electrons would pair up and this leaves us 2 vacant 3D orbitals. Yes, so we have vacant orbitals right here in the inner orbital, the inner 3D orbital itself. So in this case, as opposed to what we saw in the previous case, iron uses 2 of its inner 3D orbitals, 1 forus orbital and 3 4p orbitals to form 6 hybrid D2 sp3 orbitals, D2 sp3 hybrid orbitals. So in this case, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So in this case, we have D2 sp3 hybridization happening and these hybrid orbitals overlap with the lone pair of electrons that is donated by the 6 ligand, Cn minus ligands. So we have 6 Cn minus ligands donating electron pairs to form 6 coordinate covalent bonds giving us here again an octahedral geometry. So the hybridization of this particular complex FeCn6-4- would be D2 sp3. And as you can see here, because we are using the inner 3D orbitals to form the hybrid orbitals, we call this specific complex an inner orbital complex. So you can see that we are not commenting directly anything on the strength of the ligand here, whether it is a strong ligand or a weak ligand or anything related to how the ligand is forcing electron pairing to take place or not. So all our understanding of what the hybridization of these complexes should be is based on the experimental data, the spin magnetic moment of these complexes. Whenever we have a non-zero magnetic moment, it means that we have unpaired electrons and that almost always means we are using the outer orbitals to form the coordinate bonds. Whereas when we have paired electrons, so the complex is diamagnetic, Inner orbitals are available for bonding and as a result we end up getting an inner orbital complex or D2 sp3 hybridization. Remember this is when our coordination number is 6. So let's look at another question where we are talking about 4 ligands or coordination number is 4. Okay. So let's look at the second question very similar to the previous one. Spin magnetic moment of NiCl4 2 minus is 2.8 Bohr magneton and that of NiCn4 2 minus is 0 Bohr magneton. What is the hybridization in these complexes? Okay, so once again the first step is to figure out the oxidation state of the central metal ion. NiCl4 2 minus, let's assume the oxidation state of nickel as X. So chloride ion is an anionic ligand with a charge of minus 1, so that gives X is equal to plus 2. So the oxidation state of nickel is plus 2, which corresponds to the electronic configuration 3D8, argon 3D8. Okay. So before we go any further, we need to have the information on the magnetic moment, right? We need the experimental value here, which is 2.8 Bohr magneton. Basically, we have a non-zero magnetic moment, correct? That means we have unpaired electrons. So let's see how we fill these electrons in the 3D orbitals. We have 8 electrons, so 1, 2, 3, 8. So we have 8 electrons in the 3D orbital. And remember, magnetic moment is non-zero. That means pairing of electron is not happening here. The electrons remain unpaired. And if you substitute the value of 2, n is equal to 2 in the equation of under root of n into n plus 2, we get the same value here, 2.8 Bohr magneton, right? And as a result of this, we need to use the outer orbitals to form coordinate covalent bond. Now, since we have four ligands, we need four empty orbitals, right? So 1s and 3 4p orbitals would hybridize and form 4 sp3 hybrid orbitals. So here we have the empty sp3 hybrid orbitals and we have the chloride ions that can donate a pair of electrons to these empty orbitals and form 4 coordinate covalent bonds. So here we have 4 coordinate covalent bonds, 4 Cl minus and the hybridization of the complex is sp3 which corresponds to the geometry tetrahedral, right? sp3 hybridization corresponds to tetrahedral geometry. So, to answer this question, the hybridization of the complex NiCl4-2- is sp3 
and once again because we have used the outer orbitals outer forus and 4p orbitals and not the inner orbitals here this is an example of again an outer orbital complex all right let's extend the same logic to nicn42 minus here again we need to figure out the oxidation state of nickel which is the same x is plus 2 and that means ni2 plus has the same electronic configuration argon 3d8 but wait what is the magnetic moment here in this case magnetic moment is zero that means we do not have any unpaid electrons both of them have the same electronic configuration 3d8 but in the case of former which is nicl42 minus from the magnetic moment we understood that they have unpaired electrons but in this case all the eight electrons are paired so that would look like this one two three four five six and seven eight and this leaves us one empty 3d orbital right so this empty 3d orbital can combine with one 4s and 2p orbital to form four hybrid orbitals which is dsp2 hybrid orbitals we are using one orbital of 3d one 4s and two 4p orbitals to form four hybrid dsp2 orbitals so that would look like this and the metal ion nickel uses these hybrid orbitals to overlap with the pair of electrons that the ligands donate cn minus donates four cn minus would donate a pair of electrons to form four coordinate bonds right so in this case the hybridization of the metal complex is dsp2 not sp3 and the geometry corresponding to dsp2 hybridization is square planar where all the ligands are on the same plane as the central metal ion not like the tetrahedral structure here and what else can you say about this complex yes it is diamagnetic and also an example of an inner orbital complex because we are using the inner 3d orbitals for the coordinate bonds to form and as a result nicn42 minus is an example of an inner orbital complex so this is an interesting one because you can see that nickel has the same electronic configuration but with one particular ligand we have an outer orbital complex forming and with a different ligand cn minus ligand we have an inner orbital complex forming correct so this definitely says something about the strength or the type of ligands and we'll touch upon that in the next theory which is the crystal field theory that deeply explores the nature of these ligands and how it affects the pairing of electrons okay so that's all folks for now i hope this example makes it very clear to you how critical magnetic moment is to actually make any comment on the hybridization and geometry of these complexes based on balance bond theory.